Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Mind for Matters, a podcast for the youth, by the youth. You're joined today by myself, the host, Bertie Ahmed, and of course our guest all the way from Perth, four and a half hour flight just to get here to Sydney. But I'm so with the How are you, brother? Assalamu alaikum. Pleasure being here, buddy. Of course. Pleasure is ours. The topic today that we're talking about is like as relevant as it could be for the youth, music. Everyone asks about this. <laughs> Everyone talks about this. Exactly. Right. Relevant. Yeah. Everything from, you know, is it haram to can we pursue it as a career? All things that we will dive into, of course, as we go into it. But it being December, you know, the Spotify playlist 2022 shuffles out. Um, with mine, like mine's really diverse at the moment. I've got like, you know, a bit of um, like, you know, French music in there. I've, I've got a bit of hip hop, yep, R&B, yep. stuff I can't understand. <laughs> a bit all over the shot. Yeah. What about yours? You know, how's, how's your music? You know, journey? I saw that on social media, everyone was posting uh, their like top 10 songs of yeah, Spotify, yeah, yeah. like of 2022. To be honest, I don't even have the app on my like, phone. Like at all? I've, like actually you don't use use, I've actually never used Spotify right? uh, in my life. Is it, um, well, like for you, is it, is it YouTube music you use or? A bit of, a bit of YouTube, but I've actually um, moved on to podcasts. So a lot of that, for, for on example. On that higher reform, higher platform. Now, yeah, I mean that too, but also, you know, I'm, I love history and there's yep. so um, on YouTube, especially if you've got a subscription as well, uh, you know, you can make your own playlist um, and there's so much content out there, especially, you know, short courses in history. Right. I don't know if um, you know, you're aware of that, but mostly, for example, in my nearly five hour flight from Perth to Sydney, uh, Horse you know, spent, gaining knowledge, <laughs> um, a bit of gaining knowledge and a bit of napping. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, talk us through. So, you know, of course, you um, spent seven years in Jamia, and of course, that's a lot of spiritual, you know, reformation, spiritual training. Um, when you were younger, 14, 15, uh, you know, in your teenagers before you went to Jamia, what were you listening to then um, as compared to when you got into Jamia? What were you listening to um, during that period versus now? Like, how's, how's that sort of journey for you been? Very good question. Um, I remember back in those days like the first walkman i got so it was like right. a cassette player walkman. walkman yeah i don't know if people know is what this, that is now it, is this like the 1990s yeah walkman with you know it's, it's, it's no wide so it was a wide headphone yeah uh if you move too much it would kind of like shuffle or stop working so you have to be really still where you listen to it right but i mean you know when i entered high school um i remember everyone talked about Eminem and the Eminem show had just come out the right, album. Right. Um, so, you know, just a bit of interaction, you know, with that. But um, I wasn't really always, you know, into music as much. And I think Jamia just, you know, drew me towards, um, I guess, poetry, which is, you know, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, part of music in that sense. So, um, so during Jamia, were you listening to music at all? Um, I, again, like I said, I wasn't really ever into music that much. And mm -hmm. the music that I got into in Jamia was more poetry. Uh, because, you know, in Jama, you study s classical Urdu, yeah. uh, so Urdu poetry and then, you know, Persian poetry and some of the great poets that have come out of, you know, the subcontinent or in our Islamic history. So mm -hmm. my attention and attraction turned towards um, that way. But I can definitely understand I mean, music. It's part of this world. Um, it's ar around us. You know, everyone listens to it. And like I said, you know, these days, if you open social media, everyone's talking about the top 10 Exactly. Uh, Spotify, you know, list of 2022 or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for you, was it like a, a radical change as such? Like, did you go from listening to music and then all of a sudden I don't listen to it anymore? Or like gradually? No, 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 not, not, not radical at all. Um, it was gradual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still remember that over the course of time, you know, I just started thinking that there's no attraction in this for me. Uh, and I just actually started asking myself the question again and again that what am I getting out of this? Um, you know, some music, songs, lyrics you listen to, and once you start being conscious about what is being said, it, it actually sounds quite childish, um, <laughs> right. uh, borderline, you know, stupid as well. But again, it was a gradual process. It wasn't all of a sudden one day I woke up. Yep. I don't want to do, you know, I don't want no part of this, um, mm -hmm. slowly over the course of time. And of course, you know, seventies of Jamia and post Jamia, um, transition on to different things so it was it was almost like a you know 16 17 year old self listening to eminem dissing other artists going at it and and then gradually kind of went into you know you've kind of pondered over how how does that benefit you in your spiritual reform you know Not going through spiritual that training reform, but in life generally how does that 
how does that make me a better person, you know, mm-hmm. in life? Uh, so there were a lot of aspects to it, not only, uh, you know, in life as well, but also, again, it was just I remember that moment where I started paying more attention to lyrics. A lot of times in music, it's it's the it's it's the beats that someone might be attracted to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that conscious listening to lyrics is something that can change people for on the that, better or for mm-hmm. the worse. Actually, right. now just on that, you mentioned that the beat might be, for example, the reason someone may listen to music. I've got a comment here that stringed instruments um, sometimes, or in the Islamic rhetoric, may perhaps be seen as the instrument of the devil. Is there any truth to this at all, or? Look, so there's definitely some traditions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that are out there so um, that talk about certain instruments. But at the same time, right, the Prophet, peace be upon him, peace it's a famous upon. story. Everyone knows this. That when he entered Medina, um, the women of Medina, the people of Medina, they welcomed the Prophet, peace be upon him, with the, peace which is a type of drum. Um, and, and, and they sang in praise of the Prophet, peace be upon peace him. Be and the Prophet, peace be upon him, he peace never, uh, you know, forbade anyone from that. So... So he didn't just just to clarify, that was not forbidden. Yeah, right? that that whole um, you know, like the Prophet saw some coming into Medina, those songs of praise being sung in the background, those those drums being used. Um, this this was not forbidden. Of course, no, no, absolutely, it's not forbidden, and something that's celebrated. You know, it's it's talked highly about um, in in Islamic history and and literature. So why then, um, you know, do we perhaps? frown upon music or the use of instruments um look i remember you know reading um the second caliph and i believe it's in the commentary of surah al-asr of the holy quran and he's commented on this that look nothing is good or bad nothing like and, so in and, islam and, 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 we're and, talking and, about anything and, in general and, and yeah you look the more you think about this you realize this right and of course as a muslim he gave many examples right uh, he says that look nothing is good or bad it is just, you know, the time and place and how, uh, you know, you, you utilize that that makes it, you know, good or bad. For example, he said, and I, I remember this example, right? He said Salat, right? Our prayer five times a day, we got to pray. Yep. Um, it's, it, it's a source of virtue, right? It's, it's a part of our faith. But if someone starts praying um, at, the, at the wrong time, right? So, for example, there's certain times of the day where you're not allowed to pray. Or, for example... If someone starts praying and his neighbor's house is burning down, right? The same salat, it becomes a sin for him, right? So nothing is good or bad. It is how, when, where, the time and place we do that action, you know, do that thing that makes it good or bad. So the so same, same with then music. applies to music as absolutely, well, right? Absolutely. So same, you know, applies to music. Um, it would be incorrect to say that, you know, music is forbidden in Islam you know so just, just black and white like just that. to clarify but like it's not a black and white yes it's, it's, no it's, you it's can't not a black and white music. matter yeah it's, it's not a black okay. and white matter um i think one needs to consciously look into the kind of music that they're listening to and they would be able to conclude for themselves that this type of music is allowed for me mm-hmm. and this type of music um is detrimental to my faith and my beliefs so what might values. be an example of types of music your instances where listening to music can be good, can be beneficial to you or may, look, you know, raise you in your um, spiritual journey. Look, um, if anyone's familiar with the history of, you know, the Islamic history of the subcontinent, right? There was a time where Sufis, they used music and poetry, right? To convey the message of Islam, to convey, uh, to convey the love for divine, right? Con- to convey the message of self-reformation, right? to convey the message of getting rid, um, you know, um, of disassociation from from this world, right? So that music, it became a source of positive change in one's life, right? That music became a source of um, one, uh, you know, one treading on the path of spirituality, right? But at at the same time, you know, these days, if we look at, like I said, if you look at uh, you know, the billboard charts for 2022 and you look at the top 10 artists and you know you <laughs> listen to their lyrics, yeah. you will see that they most likely will revolve around three things. Drugs, money, women. Drugs, alcohol, um, and, and women, right? And as a Muslim, right? As a Muslim youth, right? Um, as someone who's conscious about their faith, right? Um, you must understand that... G- Overexposure to these things, right? Overexposure to 
these things can have a detrimental um, impact or effect on your faith and your and and your spirituality. Mm -hmm. And that's like for me, that's something I totally agree with. Um, these days, we we live in a age where it's it's pretty much everyone we aspire or to be is based off a role model. So mm. it, me, myself, I would look at um, X, Y, Z person who's in um, such and such industry, who's doing really well. And then I would right. be influenced you know, by exactly that. Exactly. The famous saying, you are what you eat. So you become what you listen what, to. What you listen right. to. How good imagine, is that? imagine, right? As a, um, as a kid, as a youth, um, you know, constantly throughout the day, you're commuting, you're driving. Uh, and, you know, in your wireless, you know, iPods or uh, sorry, any wireless headsets, <laughs> you're blasting, you know, this kind of music constantly in your ears. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't mean that you'll start drinking or, you know, you may start um, taking drugs. But again, the language will be such that slowly over the course of time, right, it will become part of your daily um, conversations, right? And this, you know, reminds me, it's perhaps one of the greatest examples, right? And you can the more you think about it, right, the more you can apply it in your life, right? The Prophet, peace be upon him, peace be upon him. he once gave the example of good companionship and bad companionship. And he said the example of good companionship is like that of a person um, who's, who's got beautiful fragrance. He said anyone who's close to that person, he will naturally inquire about this beautiful fragrance, right? Mm -hmm. He will naturally want some part of that beautiful fragrance and the prophet says that even if he doesn't inquire just by being close to that person at least he will benefit from the beautiful fragrance that surrounds him right and he said the example of bad companionship is that of a blacksmith right a blacksmith is constantly working with fire so anyone who's close to the blacksmith he's in danger of being burnt by that fire the Prophet says that, look, even if you're extremely so, careful and you don't get burnt, at the very least, by being close to the blacksmith, right, your clothes will get ruined because of the smoke from the fire, because of the nature of the work of blacksmith, right? So likewise with music, you know, that's fine. You may not, you may not um, get involved in some of the, you know, stuff that gets talked about in drill music or, or, or in some of the other, you know, types of music that is out there. But, right, at the very least, by constantly listening to that vocabulary, cursing, right? That's something that you then may get accustomed to. You might start, you know, incorporating it may become in your daily life. Right, in your life, in your conversation with your friends in high school and school, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important that you be mindful of these, um, you know, effects and influences of music. Yep. Let's, let's talk about the industry in itself. Right, because you've you've just given a beautiful example that you know, of course, we're we're naturally attracted to good things, and um, we're naturally also, uh, I guess, retracted from bad things or, or bad influences. Um, when we go to listen to music, for example, a music concert, that environment, we know that there are people there who may be perhaps on drugs. We know that alcohol is is also available at a lot of these music concerts. Um, could you, you know, shed some light on this? Could you give us guidance that is this perhaps the best situation that we can put ourselves into? Can we perhaps reform ourselves to avoid this? Look, absolutely. And, you know, you need to ask yourself that what are you getting out of, you know, such a concept, right? For example, someone may say that's a source of entertainment, right? Okay. Are there not better, you know, is there not better or greater entertainment? Yep, it there, could be sports, right? you know, that you perhaps, um, right. you know, take, put you your time into. You can take your family to a sporting event, right? You can support your local AFL team, or, or for example, in <laughs> yeah. Sydney, unfortunately. <laughs> no, 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 no footy, AFL, it's footy, rug, yeah. Rugby or footy, but, uh, you know, you can support your local, you know, team. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get that same entertainment enjoyment out in, of you in, know, those, other those, those venues. So, you know, one may argue that look at a concert, you know, the song, the music, you know, it may be encouraging, it may be performative, but again, the environment will be such where as a Muslim, as a person of faith, um, as a Muslim youth, um, that is not the best environment that you want to, you know, surround yourself with. So with concerts, what, what I gather as, as a young person who, who has listened to music and has grown up with music is that perhaps it's not the most... I just want to mention, I'm not that old. You said as a young <laughs> person, I'm not that old. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. continue. Yeah. Right, right. So 
with with music concerts, it's perhaps not the most best environment for us because it, it's a place where you're constantly battling or battling on numerous fronts in the sense that there's this alcohol being served there. It's a mixed environment. You can't control what other people do. And if you're in a situation where you have to double think, is this right for me? Then perhaps isn't it better to avoid that in the first place? Absolutely. And as a Muslim, you should always, you know, uh, your, your priority should be that you're trying to safeguard your faith. Right? That is the jihad that the Quran talks about, right? Mm-hmm. The greatest jihad that the Quran talks about is the jihad of the nafs, of, right? Of, of the self. Of, of, of self-betterment, right? And we as, as young Muslims need to evaluate whether if we can be in a situation better than this, be that going to the mosque, be that, you know, helping out um, at the masjid, be that running sports events, all these types of things. Why not do that? Why not focus your energy on something that improves you as a Muslim, improves you as a person? Yep, absolutely. Totally agree. Now, on that point of role models, um, you know, because we did touch on it slightly before, sometimes music artists, singers, these days, they're almost, I guess, like worshipped in the Western world, right? But at the same time... Not only in the Western world, you know, just throughout, the, throughout the, the yeah, world, yeah. yeah. And it's not only, you know, the music that you listen to, that you like them, but they the, they become models of, or role models, yeah, right? Like, be they, that sponsorship deals, exactly, you see them on your exactly, TV. Exactly, big, big endorsements, right? Sponsorship deals. Um, they become the face, right, of, um, of even sporting franchises, right? Yep. So, with music comes that aspect. And then you need to start asking yourself, and especially you know the young youth out there, um, they they become their role models, right? They they look at them as cultural icons, right? And that those same artists can sometimes, for also example, in the in the in the example of you know recently on the news, everyone knows R. Kelly, yeah, right. And all um, the all that kind of dodgy stuff he's been getting up to, and then absolutely. some I mean, of us grew up seeing him as a hero, as an icon. Absolutely, you know some of the greatest, you know, um, singles, you know, he platinum, you know, albums. Yeah, like uh, he top of the charts. He was R and B in a genre. Abso- ab- absolutely, and so many artists who are still active today, right? They collaborated with him, and they take but inspiration from him. Absolutely, the way he's saying now, but now you know. His the his his reality his truth that has come out in the public. Would any parent, you know, want their child to be associated with that person? Would any parent want um, their child, their kid, to be listening to such a person? Right now, so just to to clarify, he was convicted of child all sorts of um, all all sorts of crimes, right? All sorts of crimes, uh, and he's looking at pretty much life, you know, in, in prison. In, in prison. Yep, absolutely. So. You know, we need to look at that aspect as well. And then also, you know, there, there are so many things, other aspects that are associated with the music industry, right? It's not only, again, the lyrics, the music. Um, a lot of these artists, right, they may endorse certain brands. For example, um, alcohol brands, right? Um, vodka brands, which are not only endorsed, but also in their music videos, right? They, they, they do product placements, right? That's, so that's, all that's true. These, all these are influences which are you know our youth um our kids they're exposed to and especially now you know as a, as a father um as a parent you know i realize the importance of this that i would not want my child to be associated to these things um i would not want my child to listening to uh you know to be listening to lyrics uh, coming out of you know these icons right so again, it falls under you know what we spoke about earlier about that good companionship and bad companionship. There, there are indirect dangers right to this industry as well. Not only the music, the lyrics, and whatnot, but these indirect influences as well. Exactly right. And as as a young Ahmadi person, if you do decide you know if you're overly talented in music, um, one question I really I I really want to ask, and and that that's also on the minds of a lot of youth is. If you do go down this route, if you are talented at music and you want to take this as your professional career, we need to be mindful that it's, it's not just you making music. It's the industry. You're, you're in, in essence, controlled by a contract which then dictates where you can perform, how you can perform. And whilst we may be sort of inclined towards the many millions that you could potentially earn, let's not forget about, you know, as you said, the, these environments, these role models, who are you looking up to? Is the industry um, anything that we as Muslims should associate with? Exactly. So, you know, like you mentioned that music, lyrics is only one part of it, right? If you 
want to get involved in this industry, um, then that's only the tip of the iceberg, right? You look at, um, there's many cases of artists out there who basically sign their life over, you know, to these, um, these contracts where basically they own your talent and how you express that talent, right? So the only involvement you have in there is, you know, that you sing that song, but and the, how, and when, it. where, um, in front of whom you do it, that's all, you know, contractual. You have to honor those, you know, sometimes lifelong agreements. Uh, mm -hmm. So music and, it, you know, the music industry, music is only one part of it. It's tip of the iceberg. But it's almost like a whole lifestyle once you dive deep into it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yep. say, say, for example, you are a, a big time musician. Hmm. Um, and you do happen to be of the Muslim faith. You could perhaps be put in a situation day to day where you're kind of um, battling between, I've just been told I have to go and perform at a nightclub. Hmm. But of course, it's clearly against, you know, your the, values, the, and our, our values, Absolutely. the environments Absolutely. that we need to be in. And, and you can't control that. You might be, um, you know, it's decided for you what you have to wear at this particular concert. And you might not agree with that whatsoever, but contractually, you're obliged to follow that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why, again, as a whole, right, you have to look at this. Um, you have to look at the greater picture as well. And lyrics and music and the artists are only mm -hmm. one part of it. And there's a darker side to it, which, you know, you have just touched upon. So on that note, I do want to ask uh, if it isn't the financial gain that's a driving force for someone to become a musician, if they're just genuinely good at it, like they sing, they're good at it and, and, and they're passionate about it. What's your guidance on that? Like someone who's just so naturally... a hobby or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it's, if it's just as a hobby, like... So, so say, for example, football. If I'm good at football, I want to pursue something related to football, right? If being a football player isn't the most ideal thing in the world, but I can still somehow, you know, be involved with it. Now, let's translate that to music. If being an artist has all those downsides, but I'm genuinely passionate about making music, creating music as an MD Muslim, what would you be? Or what would your guidance be on that? Look, there are ways that you can channel that passion and get that satisfaction, you know, from, 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 you know, this passion of yours. And that can be through, you know, various means. Um, but if you're in, you know, creating music, then there are certain aspects, you know, within the Jamaat that you can help out technically, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're into singing, for example, right? You might uh, go into Nazim. Nazim, right? Poetry, right? Mm -hmm. Poetry, even I think... Um, some, you know, some people, for example, they may be, um, good at writing, you know, poetry lyrics. I remember at the Ishtama in United States, and I remember watching, you know, the reels of shots, um, they had a recital, like poetry recital competition, right. right. And where I saw, you know, some wonderful expression of poetry, um, reformative poetry, right. Poetry that triggers thought, right. Uh, poetry that reminds you. Um, of God, of self-reformation, and all these, you know, things. Um, from there, you know, you can take that passion towards Nazims, of course. You yeah. know, beautiful Nazims recited at Jalsas. I'll be watching on MTA. Uh, imagine, imagine that passion, right, being channeled uh, at a Nazim recitation. You know, you're reciting Nazim at Jalsa, and Hazurian was present there. Right. Exactly. Could there be a greater expression of passion than that moment, right? Uh, and then, of course, perhaps an expression that becomes, um, you know, a virtue, right? Recitation of the Holy Quran, right? That is not only an expression of that passion, but that expression becomes a virtue, right? We know uh, the reward, the spiritual reward of reciting the Holy Quran. So Islam does not block this passion, right? Um, our faith encourages, right, the display of this passion through means or through ways which become a source of benefit, not only for yourself, right, but the people around you. So in, in essence, it's if you can channel your skill to something that benefits you individually and the Jamaat wider, why not do that? Be that, you know, singing Nazims, um, be that writing poetry. And, and I would like to ask as a young, curious person, Rap is a form of expression. Um, rap is Could poetry, you like, absolutely. you know, make poetry, but rap it rather than sort of look, talking about vulgar things in your rap? Absolutely. Look, rather than, you know, rapping about vain things, right? Um, alcohol and drugs and whatnot, right? 
imagine someone and I gave the example of, you know, the 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 in the United States, right? Why not rap or write, you know, poetic verses, right? About the unity and brotherhood in Islam. Imagine that writing about How the good. companions, right? The, uh, His Holiness, right? Um the um Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, right? For the past I think since early 2018, right? He's been speaking about companions um of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who took part in the Battle of Badr, right? I know a brother who wrote um, a, a, a poetic rap uh, on the 313, right? The 313 <laughs> companions. See, now, to me, that's that's real skill. Exactly, right? right? So so he wrote, you know, in, in praise of those companions and their sacrifices, right? Imagine someone, you know, who composes a rap, uh, a, a poetic, you know, verse um, in praise of the Lord, right? In, in praise of Allah, right? Um, which 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 is a source of virtue, right? Imagine someone writing a poetic reference in in regards to the love of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So there are definitely ways that you can channel this passion, um, and and you know we've we've discussed those. These are some examples. Yeah. So it, like to to the to to the audience, it's it's not just oh uh, look if you're good at music, all you can do is nazams in a certain tone. You can be expressive. You can still channel your um, your your skill, your experience, and and of course, it's it's just that, um, I guess that sense of going from something vulgar, going from something that serves you no purpose, going from something that to society as you no know, to something that serves a higher purpose. Exactly right? right. And we should always remember that this is what Quran teaches us, right? Um, the Quran teaches a Muslim that kuntum khaira ummatin okhrijat linnas, right? That a Muslim's purpose of life or or or, or he he's a Muslim if his existence is a source of benefit to others, right? Khaira ummatin ukrijat lidnas that you've been raised for the service of mankind, right? So if that passion, you know, becomes um that service to mankind. Always then, strive then, for the benefit. Yeah. And then so so that same passion it becomes a virtue for them. Perfect. <clears throat> now next something I'd like to dive into is some questions that we've we've got from Qudam. And one of those being that in Oh, in weddings, um, music tends to be a big feature of that. You know, be that in in Eastern culture, be that in Western culture. Um, is it like what would your guidance be in regards to this issue? Is is that something that's sort of frowned upon? Should we perhaps encourage it? Um, all right. What about you? Uh, would you? <laughs> what's, you know, what's, what's what's your thought on wedding right. uh, on 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 music at weddings? To me, I can see why. You know, like with would you? Okay, wait. Let me let me ask that question. Yeah, yeah. Um. Why would you want music at your wedding? It looks cool. It looks cool. <laughs> I, I can't lie. <laughs> All right. Um. Like cool. just 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 seeing different types of cultural weddings and you, you know the way that their their cultural specific music is being played. Um. Like like Arab weddings, for example, right? Like yep. the types of music that they play in that. It's 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 a really kind of distinctive touch that I'm at an Arab wedding, for example. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, being an Ahmadi Muslim, I understand that that's something I, I, I really shouldn't aspire to. So personally, I wouldn't have music at my wedding. Right. So, you know, it looks cool. Um. You know, it's a form of ent- entertainment, right? Um. At the same, you know, I want everyone to think about this, right? Mm-hmm. Would you rather have, you know, these meaningless lyrics at your wedding? Or would you rather have, right, um prayers right of rabul alamin right lord of the worlds at your wedding for the groom for the bride for the family for the future would you rather have someone right uh reciting poetry in a beautiful melody right in a in a in a, in a beautiful voice at your wedding and that poetry kind of elevates everyone right it that poetry revol- revolves around um, you know, prayers for the bride, prayers for the groom, prayers for the two families, prayers for, for this union, um, and prayers for the future, right? Yeah. Um, like, I, I feel over, like, how much more beautiful is that when you're talking about a an event as significant as a wedding and, and, and of course, the, the importance that it has in someone's life? Why would you want to ruin it with lyrics such as, I, mean, I bought two Lambos? It, it's, single, and it's, it's, it's probably one of the, you know, single most important you know, steps of your life. I mean, yep. your life is going to change after that. Not only your life, you know, your partner's life. Uh, you're starting a new life as a couple. Uh, you're starting, you know, a new life as a family. You're starting a new life with 
uh, you know, this whole family, which you weren't related to before, but through this union and through this marriage, you've, you know, you've, they've become your family, they've mm -hmm. become your relatives. So why not start that, right? With a with much these, more spiritual, with these, with, yeah, exactly. With these prayers, you know, which, which are all encompassing prayers. And again, you know, coming back to that serves a higher purpose, uh, you know, that safeguards our faith, right? That represents our morals and our values. So Abu I think, so mm -hmm. I think everyone, you know, at a wedding, you know, should think about, you about, know, these, about these things, things. Yes. Um, and, uh, and, and the answer would become quite clear to them. It is like after, you know, after you've just explained that, it's like, would you rather in the most or, you know, significant event of your life, have random music that just sounds nice, but it's talking about like drugs and alcohol and women, or would you have something that's more meaningful, religious, um, that serves a purpose with prayers? A, a far at that higher event? purpose, right? exactly right. And and not only a purpose to do with you know the the, the emotions of that day, uh, but it's sort of like an everlasting purpose. You know those prayers, they're everlasting, right? Uh, they they will be by your side, you know, for the for the rest of your life, right? So I think if you put things into perspective that way, I think everyone would be able to conclude uh, what they would rather have at the wedding. Yeah, like as, as Ahmadi Muslims, it, it does become quite apparent as to what you would rather have at such a significant event. Mm. And, and I guess we've kind of done the, you know, the whole round of can you be a musician, um, music concerts, music, uh, yeah. at, you know, weddings at significant events, the goods and the bads mm. of the industry. Um, one thing I would like to ask is... I've got a question here, um, which relates to being involved with music. Could you, for example, be a sound in, um, engineer, you know, like the project manager for a music concert? <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I mean, how far would you go with this, right? What if someone asks, uh, could you be, uh, you know, a, a, a limousine driver, right? That, 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 yeah. that drives around Travis Scott, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe be the pilot that takes him from like LA to Sydney. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Could you be right, the, like the guy's just flying a plane? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Could you be the pilot that flies, you know, Coldplay um, across the Atlantic Ocean, right? So I think these are very, uh, you know, the, the unnecessary questions. I think, uh, you know, the, the things that we've discussed upon, you know, they, they are more important in nature uh, about what, music does to us right um why it's important to be conscious about uh what we hear right because just like we talked about before that you are what you eat you become what you listen to right like, to me that's that's something out of this podcast just walking mm. out that'll mm. really stick with me and, and 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 i think you know and i remind this you know where i sit with youth and and it's literally a conscious reminder to myself that just be conscious about what you're listening to right and think and question yourself what are you getting out of this yeah. Right. How is this improving your life? How is this making you better? And can you substitute that with something which would truly, right, um, have 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 a positive impact on your life? And not only a momentary um, impact or change, but something that will be um, like more for the lasting. Longer term, yeah, right? for the longer term, absolutely. Like for us, it's for us as Muslims, it's quite evident what our purpose in life is. It is not to, you know, listen to music on full blast and, and, and party and mm. like do that for the rest of our lives. We know that, that our purpose as Muslims is to get closer to our creator, the Lord. We know that in this short lifespan that we have, our purpose is to get close to him by getting to heaven. And so why not reform ourselves, achieve the, you know, like the jihad there, Kabir, which is to reform ourselves um, to the best that we can be substitute things that have like negative um i guess expressions connotations with um music or poetry that is perhaps better for you um that when you listen to it you are inspired to do good mm. when you create it when you write it you are inspired in a more religious sense absolutely that enhances your spirituality and uh and not only uh you know reforms you but also becomes a source of reformation for people around you right again coming back to that reference of good companionship and the beautiful fragrance that beautiful fragrance you not know, doesn't only benefit you right but the people who are around you they benefit from the beautiful fragrance as well to conclude i think i would have to take some things out of my place for the <laughs> 2023 <laughs> shuffle um i guess <laughs> this is quite apparent um but at least there's there's a lot of things that have been answered and to me are also now quite apparent if you're involved with music if you are a musician 
translate that into something for a higher purpose right if you are someone who listens to music quite often mm. perhaps maybe we should reduce the minutes maybe and, and, we don't, and don't look for radical changes right has to don't, be gradual yep yeah, and and because gradual changes uh will lead to you know uh more lasting changes right so gradual changes can be you know change the type of music you listen to from that you know you work towards um a greater conscious awareness of what you listen to and from there, you know, you can go towards rather than just listening to, you know, vain lyrics, right? Look for something that empowers you, that benefits you, that benefits your spirituality, right? And from there, of course, you can go to wonderful poetry of, you know, various saints of the past, right? Muslim saints of the past, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, some of which, some of whom are mm -hmm. even celebrated in the vet, um, um, in the West, right? Yep. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've got the wonderful work. Um, of, of the promise of peace be upon him, which in fact has now been translated into English as well, yeah. right? Um, and of course, right, the single greatest, um, you know, uh, thing that you can listen to, right, um, is, you know, the, the Holy Quran, right? The, the book of, of God, the words of God, the poetry of God, right? Um, and that is something which not only become, you know, a fragrance for you that you will benefit, but also the people who are around you, right? They will benefit from that fragrance that emits from you. Is there um, some, like, you know, poets that you could perhaps recommend uh, or their writings or readings that do reflect a, um, you know, a, a deeper understanding of God, a deeper connection with God once you read their works? Absolutely. And, you know, these, we can, we can probably do a whole new podcast on this, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, perhaps one of the most, um, you know, celebrated, but also perhaps one of the most misunderstood mystic Sufi poet, you know, even in the West is, is Jalaluddin Rumi or, you know, famously known as Rumi in the West, right? Um, his poetry, although people misunderstand it to reflect, um, you know, earthly love or, or, or humanly love, it reflects, you know, divine love and, and, and divine enlightenment. So right? he's, he's using um, that love as a metaphor. For, yep, absolute metaphors. Um, spiritual I mean, I mean, love. I mean, it's, it's I mean his poetry is filled with metaphors. Absolutely. Um, you know, his, his poetry is filled with um, you know, this, this world being the, 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 the material nature of this world being, uh, being very limited, uh, compared to, you know, the everlasting nature of, of the life of hereafter. So, you know, of course there's him, uh, there's many a great Persian, you know, poets as well. Uh, and then of course, you know, the promise of peace be upon him and of course, Khulafa as well, right? Um, various caliphs, right? The second caliph. Um, the fourth caliph, right? They've got wonderful works of poetry that cover all these topics, right? They cover the Quran, they cover the Ummah, they cover, you know, brotherhood, they cover their longing for God, right? All these are expressions, you know, uh, which one can benefit from. So music isn't completely haram, right? I don't have to repent for the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> There's a balanced approach to everything in life. And that's something that I think each and every, you know, Muslim should um, strive to. So it's always the balance. Absolutely. Balance has to be maintained in everything in life. And on that note to the audience, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Mind for Matters. It's been quite the enlightening discussion. And, and I guess there's a lot of, um, this is one of those episodes that you take a lot out of. Like, you know, if, the, if there's ever any um, gray area, if there's any sort of questions you do have regarding to music, how you can be involved with it, what you can and can't sort of listen to, what you should be listening to, feel free to come back to this episode. If there's any further questions, feel free to ask us, um, as always, on ask.fm forward slash Mind for Matters. Um, and of course, we'll be posting short snippets of this on, um, on our Instagram as well so this content if there's any sort of questions regarding this feel free to reach out to us but i've thoroughly enjoyed this and and of course um, i've enjoyed being here thank you thank You're you so much voice. for clearing up so much in regards <laughs> to such a hot topic and um we shall see you soon thank you so much for your time Jazakum Jazakum. Catch you soon, brother. thank you to the audience Jazakum.